Your car needs air to operate efficiently, and a restrictive paper air filter can leave it gasping for breath. K&N Lifetime air filters with high flow technology aren't made of paper, so air flows more easily. In short, more air means more horsepower. Changing your clogged air filter can improve mileage by up to 10%, and a K&N Lifetime air filter never needs to be replaced. Make your move with K&N, the world's best air filter. k and a company that's been selling air filters since 1969 to consumers. We invented the high-flow cotton air filter that's washable and reusable and can actually last for the life of a vehicle. And there's nothing that this company feels is more important than the quality of the products that we sell or the satisfaction of our consumers after they purchase those products and put them in vehicles, which in most cases are going to be in those vehicles for as long as our customers own them. So when several years ago I began hearing um, occasionally instances where consumers would call up complaining that a dealership or a service provider had informed them that our product, specifically oil from our product, had caused a problem in their vehicle that required repair, um, I took great notice of that. Even though we sell literally millions of replacement air filters every year, and the number of phone calls that we would get was maybe one a month back in those days, and even now it might be up to a handful of times a month. Uh, we took it very seriously, and I recognize that it, it may be that some companies would consider the number of incidents we've had to be statistically insignificant or something that they would simply write off as a natural business occurrence. But truly, each individual consumer experience with a K&N product is what has gotten this company to be perceived by many to be the world's best air filter company. And it's what makes us all proud to work here as employees of the company. Now, I'm no different than anybody else. And when a mechanic tells me something's wrong with my car and what that is and why it went wrong, um, I tend to believe them no differently than I'd believe a doctor telling me why I got sick or what I need to cure it. And when we began to first hear about these incidences, I understood enough about the situation to recognize that because all cars are different um, and actually have different sensors manufactured by different companies in them, because cars have different air intake paths between the uh, air being introduced into the engine and arriving at the throttle body. Um, it was clear to me that uh, what we would need to do is identify whether or not there were circumstances or some combination of elements that actually created a scenario in which oil came off of our air filter and fouled a sensor within a vehicle uh, requiring repair. I was primarily driven by the desire to understand when it happens, in what vehicles, and under what circumstances, because with that information, uh, I would be able to make the proper decisions to make sure that we delivered the product that was suitable for that application. So in essence, if we discovered that um, there was a problem on a particular uh, vehicle, we would simply design a filter um, that would not create that circumstance. Once again, all of that was based upon my assumption that when a mechanic said something happened, it in fact did happen. I think what you're about to see you'll find interesting because not only do we get deeply into the issue of mass airflow sensors and how they operate within a vehicle environment, but we learned a lot more about the actual physical processes of air moving through the filter and into an engine than even we had understood before. And we, to greater or lesser extent, have been studying this for over 35 years. Early on, we recognized that the consumer was in the middle in, in an incidence like this with his uh, mass airflow sensor and his new car warranty. We also understand that the dealership is many times in the middle also between uh, a consumer and a district representative. So both parties are in the middle. Our goal is to give both of them information that they can use to solve the problem. 
We just refuse to allow our customer to be in the middle of a situation like this. We stand behind our product. So today, what we do if a customer calls and they've had their vehicle at a dealership, or even if it is at a dealership currently, and they're having a, uh, an issue with a mass air sensor problem by their dealer or independent repair facility, the first thing that we do with the customer is we talk to the customer, find out uh, what dealership it is at, and we try to get in contact with the dealership or at least receive the work order from the customer so we can determine how the repair facility uh, came to the conclusion or the diagnosis that our filter somehow contributed to a problem with their mass air sensor. We'll also request that the mass air sensor be sent to us so that we can investigate uh, the mass air sensor, whether it is contaminated. We can test it on the stand. We can run through that. We also ask that the filter be sent to us also because frequently the claim is the filter may be overoiled. Once we recover uh, the sensor and all the components, what we do is we issue it a number so that we can track it from beginning to end through our system. We'll put the uh, components into the lab and what we initially do to start out with is for the mass air sensor, we'll take that mass air sensor and we'll look at it under a microscope and actually see that a 5,000 times magnification, what, what is going on with it? It wasn't contaminated at all. Um, if it's a dry contamination, we just continue on with running it on the test stand. If there's any dampness, if, if, any, if there is a contamination on it and if it has any dampness property whatsoever to it, what we will do is we have a, uh, a, an agreement set up with a forensics laboratory nearby and we will send it to them and they'll do a complete chemical and elemental analysis on it. They've already done a complete analysis on our filter oil so they know what to look for and, and what to compare it against. And we receive that back from the lab with a determination, is it just oil, common minerals, whatever, whatever is on the the master sensor, we get, we get their, uh, their diagnosis back from them. Then we will run it on the test stand and see how it runs. You know, does it, how does it compare to a new one? The test stand features a variable airflow source along with a constant mass air meter that is calibrated annually. This gives us repeatability and with the computer generated data acquisition system gives us very smooth consistent and repeatable data. In our testing we use two different style mass air sensors. The hot wire sensor and the hot film sensor. These are the two commonly used sensors in the automotive industry and they work according to the same principle. When the engine is running and air flows through the intake and through the mass air sensor, the air that flows by actually cools down the element so the ECU has to add extra voltage to maintain a certain temperature. That voltage difference is used to determine the airflow in the engine. Because we saw that the airflow, and therefore the engine, um, would actually draw the oil off the sensor. And the voltage output readings were a little awkward in the beginning, but after a couple of cycles and when the oil was drawn off the sensor, the sensor returned back to normal and would perform just as it did before it was submerged in oil. We heard rumors on the internet that oil would actually be drawn off our filters and cause the mass air sensor to fail. So we wanted to duplicate that situation and we grabbed an airbrush and hooked it up to the mass air sensor test stand and applied a constant oil feed to the sensor. And the results were interesting because we were not able to harm the sensor in any way. The third test that we performed, we added dirt to the mass air sensor. We actually grabbed ISO test dust and added this to the sensor while running the test stand. In the meantime, we were monitoring the voltage output and we saw that it didn't harm the sensor at all and we had no differences in voltage output readings. We found out that mass air sensors are very durable and we were not able to cause one to fail. After receiving back many of these mass air sensors, I think we were right around mid-90s, almost 100 mass air sensors that had been sent back to us for analysis and we were finding no K&N oil on any of them, we started wondering, well maybe 
you know, what, what is the circumstance that, that oil might come off our filter and contaminate a mass air sensor? We've not seen one yet. So we decided to do some extreme testing, some real world testing and see what, what condition does it take to move oil off of our filter to potentially contaminate a mass air sensor. So we decided to look at this whole program. So we set up a test protocol. One of them was we took a brand new 2007 Chevy Silverado truck. We cut a window in the air box and we put a wind meter inside of it. And we wanted to see what is the airflow inside the air box at varying speeds on this vehicle. And we used our own in-house dyno which to perform this test and we captured it on video. What we did is we put the wind meter on the, the, we did some testing to find the sweet spot on the filter where most air was moving through it, where we would get the highest speed. And we decided to measure that under varying driving conditions.